What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. What's going on everybody, my name is Tiggs, aka Tiago, and today I'm bringing you a little Destiny gameplay. Specifically a new series that I'm titling Underage. Now what is Underage? Underage is when we are able to jump into a Crucible game and hold the team to under 1800 points. Today's edition is brought to you by the Kurtazen Raid Weapons. In this episode we're rocking with Ken and Jeremy, and using the Fang of Ryu, Light of the Abyss, and the sorry excuse for the rocket launcher known as the Hunger of Crota. Ken was running with the Abyss Defiant, Black Hammer, and the No Wonder Crota's Hungry Because Crota Feeds on Guardian's Light and Not a Single Guardian Was Ever Killed Using That Gun Gun. Jaber had a Word of Crota, Black Hammer, and you guessed it, the Hunger of Crota. As much as I'm ragging on the Hunger of Crota, I suppose the alternative was using Song of Ryu, which is just... I, I don't want to talk about that gun either. Just no, to both of the heavies. The Fang of Ryu isn't terrible. It isn't Crota's gift to PvP guns, but it's actually really, really usable. It's basically the vision of Confluence with Third Eye and Perfect Balance, but no full auto. Just having the same stats as Vision of Confluence Back makes it back. decent, but it's not otherworldly. <laughs> the Light of the Abyss, as you probably all know, has a ridiculous charge rate. That in and of itself makes it decent, and I'm not much of a sniper guy, so it was my only option here. It could use more range, and it could use more impact, but that charge rate is something pretty special. The uh, disgusting uselessness that is the Hunger of Crota is, as you guessed it, useless. I truly felt less safe using the Hunger of Crota than I did using the Light of the Abyss, or the Fang of Ryut, or my knife, or running away. Ken was using the Abyss Defiant, and he called it a crappier version of the Shadow Price. I don't know what that means, because the Shadow Price is pretty good. He didn't like it at all, but this is the same kid whose favorite primary weapon is also some pulse rifle. He's also the same kid who's probably our best PvP player, so you take that opinion however you want. As for the word of Crota that Jeremy was using, it's the only Crota's end gun that I haven't dropped yet, so I can't give you my opinion on it, but the two guys in our clan that have been trying to use it haven't said too many good things about it. I mean, Jeremy didn't have very many complaints, but wasn't exactly singing its praises. It's hard for him to move on to another legendary hand cannon though, because he has one of the most spectacular Lord High Fixer perk rolls I've ever seen, and so he has no use for trying to move on to another gun. As for the Black Hammer, it's okay, I guess. It's really good in PvE, obviously, but in PvP, the thing that makes it so good doesn't really apply. It fires relatively slow and only has three bullets. If you can hit three headshots in a row in PvP, then hats off to you, but I don't think very many people can. It just makes it a much worse option than, let's say, the Praetis Revenge, for example. It's the only raid sniper, though, and they didn't want to use the Swordbreaker or the Light of the Abyss. Let me know down below what's your favorite raid weapon from Crota's End. Honestly, what made this episode more difficult than I expected is just the fact that we're so spoiled. We never really use guns outside of that god tier of PvP, right? Thorn, Suros, Vex, The Last Word, Plan C. It just took some adjustment mentally to take a step back and accept the fact that we can't go guns blazing into the middle of the map and take all three out without skipping a beat. It took us, I think, three games of Skirmish to get this gameplay, and I mean, that's not a lot, but it was harder than I expected. What we do have going for us is the fact that we play this game a lot. Not only do we play this game a lot, we play it together a lot. Nine times out of ten, I feel like I know roughly where Ken and Jeremy are going to be on the map and what they're trying to do at a given time. So that makes it easy for me to decide what I want to do, where I want to be, and where I need to look. Being this familiar with each other already gives us a big advantage over teams stumbling into skirmish with two players they've never played with before and will probably never play with again, but I digress. We're playing skirmish on Twilight Gap, which you've already seen from the last few minutes of gameplay, but this is probably my favorite map, honestly. I really, really like the fact that there are like, what, three ways to cross the map instead of one hallway that can just be locked down and held the entire game? Cough. Every Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 map ever. Cough. Anyway, you can see just generally speaking here, we try to stay together. That's always a good thing in Skirmish because your objective is just to kill and not die. There aren't any control points or relics or anything like that, so if you're always team shotting your opponent, there's a good chance you're going to win your gunfights. Unless your name is Ken. If your name is Ken, you can just run around the map like a chicken with your head cut off using your vastly superior dexterity to outgun everyone and everything. But really, the kid is good and maybe one day you'll hear him talk about what he does that makes him so good at PvP. Maybe. You'll see us kind of set up camp in the middle of the map. The radar that Destiny always has on obviously comes in handy here, and since we're constantly communicating, it's easy just to shift directions to where the enemy is actually coming from. I would argue we also got a better spawn to get to where we set up, which let us get ready for them to come to us rather than going out and looking for them. Using a scout rifle like the Fang of Ryut, I wasn't able to play as aggressively as I would have liked, but that's why I had my Light of the Abyss. 
being a fusion rifle, it kind of handled the close to medium ranges where the scout rifles struggle a little bit at. I really wanted to use the Fanger for Ute heavily because it just looks like a good PvP gun to me, and it was, but I don't know if I'll ever get into the scout rifle playstyle. That doesn't mean it's not a good weapon though. You'll see me back out of bad situations and group up on Ken and Jeremy, oh and that's just a matter of knowing which gunfights are in your favor and which gunfights are going to just end with your opponent barrel stuffing you with their shotgun. The Light of the Abyss allows you to play a little bit more aggressively just because of its absurd charge rate, but you're going to get a lot more hit markers than you will one shot kills. You can kind of deal with this by meleeing and praying that they're not going to shotgun you in between your shot and your melee. The Hunger of Crota is just bad. It says it tracks, but I don't believe that at all. The blast radius is trash, at least in PvP. I don't know, it works okay in PvE, but in PvP I seriously have more kills with like stage hazards than this Hunger of Crota. I don't want to beat this already beaten and dead horse anymore, but yeah, we used it because the Song of Ryu is just as bad, if not worse. That gun just has too much recoil and too little impact to be usable in PvP. Despite my whining about the guns, it was honestly a super fun challenge. Getting underage with your best guns is hard enough, but when you throw in some limitations, it really tests you. If you have any suggestions for what gun or guns you want to see next on Underage, make sure to drop a comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more Destiny content, make sure you check out the channel, subscribe, and drop some feedback. I'll see you guys next time, and as always...